Welcome back, my friends, to TFT Hyperroll with Artark. The eagle-eyed among you will notice I am not on my main character in this game and won't be on most of the games I'm going to post because I'm waiting to see if they fix the hero augment roll thing or if that's a permanent thing we have to deal with. If it is, hoot boy, do I got a lot of things to say about it. But before that, graphic, like, comment, subscribe, help the algorithm. Let's get the channel out there. Set 9, a lot of fun for the most part, minus some of the bugs. But let's get into this video. So I actually started this game hoping to do Piltover because I got an early Jace, but you need three and it's not easy to get them early on. Eh? On a roll, probably our best choice because you'll get a free shop refresh each time you two-star a champion. Would have loved the ability to re-roll them. Riot. Riot, you hear me out there? Anywho, we managed to get a two-star Kale and two-star Poppy, so just in the interest of making the best board, we kept Jason so we could speed up Kale's attack and were able to win the first round. Now, since I had the early Kale and early Poppy, I'm thinking about going Demacia. I run into a team that is running Demacia. If you do this, make sure to put your champions next to the champions that are the elite so they get the bonus. Doesn't have to be right next to them, can be up to the corner, anywhere in the adjacent spots, and you get a nice bonus for it. And right now it seems like they really want me to have Poppy and Kale, and they just keep giving me more Poppies and Kale. I need another Demacian in order to really create the synergy, so right now the team just got really weak. Item choices are also a little, uh, meh. So I go ahead and grab the Giant's Belt, because that can help with the front line, which is a key part of the Demacian build. I bring in a Maokai just to take Bastion for Poppy. If you decide to go Demacia, and I'm really regretting it in this game, it's good to have the early synergy. If not, you're going to lose early. And we get our next set of unrollable augments. Escort quest is not good if you're losing. All natural, really not good at all. Martyr, I kind of like because you will at least get some healing back when your other champions die. So it gives you a chance to stay alive. Important in the Demacian build is to bring in Tarek and Soraka. They work together incredibly well. But most important is going to be Lux. So you will see right now how things start to change. Now, because we got her last second, we didn't have a chance to really mess with positioning. We just wanted to get a Hextech Gunblade on her so she could heal. Notice she now also has a Radiant Giant Slayer. And because we have Martyr, it is helping keep us alive, along with Soraka, who is healing as well, and we actually get to win. After the NPC round, we are offered a tier, which will go great with our other tier and we can now fully itemize Lux. Notice how we're positioned. We have an elite Demacian up front with Poppy next to Galio, so everyone there is covered. And then in the bottom left, we have Lux as our elite, and we can put other Demacians in next to her so that they are covered. So everyone is getting the bonus that they require. Now, we're still a little bit weak due to a number of one-star units. Garen, Galia, all one-star. Lux is one-star, but she's pretty, pretty strong. But our front line just isn't that strong yet. Notice when Lux is able to cast, she does a lot of damage, but we need the front line to get stronger. That's going to help once we add in Tarek. We two-starred the Tarek and brought him in, but that doesn't really solve the problem because it's Tarek and Soraka working together that really creates what you need. Having them together gives you Targon, which is going to increase the effectiveness of Tarek's shielding and Soraka's healing. Now in this particular world that we're playing, we get a Masterwork upgrade at 7-1. So we can go ahead and create a Radiant item on top of a Radiant item. It's a tough choice between the Hextech Lifegate and Blue Blessing. 
I decide to go with the Blue Blessing simply because Lux casting as often as possible is going to be the key to victory. And just watch the end of this NPC round as Lux decides that another board needs some help. She's just going to take care of something going on off screen that we can't see. That leads us to our next group. Demacia Crown would be great if we had another one, but you need two. Gifts from above would give us additional items, but Golden Ticket might be just the ticket. Sorry, I, I had to. It was so there. Now, one of the difficult things when you're playing Demacia is as you multi-star and as you itemize champions, you may change who your elite is. And as your elite changes, so might your positioning. So keep a very close eye on it. With Lux and Garen now up at two stars, we're in pretty good shape. We also just three-starred the Kale and picked up a Jarvan. We're going to be itemizing the Jarvan because he will go in as soon as possible. He provides absolutely critical CC for this build. Now, here's a little bit of what I'm talking about. We get the gold three-star Kale. I want to put a Rage Blade on. The moment I do, Kale is now the Elite. But once I grab J4 off the bench, who has two items on, even though he's only one star, he becomes the Elite. So I'm able to create two clusters of champions around the Elites. Once I get to seven, I will get an additional Elite so I can add a third cluster in. The reason we went Rage Blade on Kale is that every third attack is going to put out a wave that reduces magic resist since our damage is all coming from Lux who is pure magic damage having lower magic resist on the opposing team is going to be the key for victory after the NPC we have some item choices to make Titans resolve makes an excellent Garen item but again keep an eye on what happens Garen now becomes the elite Kale is no longer the elite which is fine, that keeps all of my clusters exactly the same. Next item choice comes up, where to put it? If we put something on Kale, Kale will probably become elite again. But in reality, I don't need Kale to be elite, so I can put a Chalice of Power on Sona, separate out Kale and Lux, giving Lux more power. Now I have opted right now to go to the Seven Demacian rather than bring in Soraka and get Targon. That's probably a mistake. I like having the extra Radiant item, but it's a lot of RNG. Lux got a good one, but not quite good enough to win that round. And we're now one life left and not yet in the top four. I ended up moving Garen down so I could create a full cluster in the corner and that also provided a little extra protection for Kale so that more magic shredding was going out. This coupled with the fact that Lux gets the Radiant Death Cap and we are brought into the top four and can now bring in Soraka for the final piece of the puzzle. The other little drama unfolding is I got, thanks to Golden Ticket, very close to a Gold Lux and was able to lock for it in the NPC round. So I come out of this NPC round with a three star Gold Lux. Item wise, I want to grab the ZZ Rot because I want just more time for Lux to do damage and having something else in the front line that is gonna pop out that's going to be useful. I also have to be a little bit careful with how I place this. So I decide to go ahead and grab the Zeke's Herald. I don't want to change who my elites are at this point. And while I don't necessarily think it will happen, I don't know the formulas yet. So at this point, I'm not going to take many chances with changing it up. Having Jarvan, Garen, and three-star gold Lux that's the ticket that I want. It's going to hold everything back from Lux. She ends up with two radiant blue buffs. That technically shouldn't be possible, but it is. And you can see how incredibly fast she tears through an opposing team. 
So are you ready to experience the brutality of a gold three-star Lux? Just watch the other team get melted one after another as she focuses on them. They don't have a chance with over 11,000 damage. And we are going to face an Ionia team that has a two-star Ari. And as many people have mentioned, Ionia can be a little bit broken. We move Lux into the corner so she's not quite as susceptible and then see what she can do against Ionia. And as you can see, she just again starts slicing through things very, very quickly. They never stood a chance. We don't even have time to go and check in on the other fight before that one's over it well, and it is GG for everyone. Yeah, Demacia. Incredibly strong. Give it a try. Hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have an absolutely, absolutely awesome day.